Hello and welcome to Provis Gaming. In this video, we will be covering the hard mode bosses from the new Zerka Core Meltdown Flashpoint. Unlike other flashpoints in the Old Republic, Core Meltdown allows you to choose which boss you want to do first. For the purposes of this video, we'll assume that the Enhanced Doom Claw is the first boss, the Enhanced Blivither is the second boss, and the Vigilant is the last boss. The Enhanced Doom Claw is the first and arguably the most difficult boss within the flashpoint. There are very few mechanics to worry about, but it relies on having a tank with good reflexes and judgment. The primary mechanic revolves around a sandstorm. When you see Sandstorm Simulation activated on your screen, the tank must find a green generator at one of the four corners of the room. The tank must then immediately drag the boss to that green generator. A few seconds into the Sandstorm, Doomclaw will channel Rampage. This is an AoE that originates from each player, and therefore every player must be spread out to avoid extra damage. As long as the tank is standing next to the generator, the Rampage from the boss will destroy the generator and thus end the Sandstorm. Rampage lasts about 4 seconds and will do 4k damage per second to every party member, in addition to the damage from the Sandstorm. Thus it is critical that the Sandstorm is ended as quickly as possible. In our run, we find it easiest for the tank to pull the boss back to the middle as soon as the generator is destroyed, thereby cutting down the runtime required to get to the next generator when the Sandstorm reappears. The group will have approximately one minute between each sandstorm. If the tank reacts quickly, you can deal with the rampage and the sandstorm within a matter of seconds, thereby leaving most of the fight a simple tank in spank. If the sandstorm is not dealt with immediately, however, and the boss is allowed to do a second round of rampage, that will be putting unnecessary pressure on the healer. The Doom Claw has no other noteworthy mechanics, so if you have a tank who knows what he's doing, this is a relatively simple fight. The Enhanced Ribblether is the second boss of the Zerka Core Meltdown Flashpoint. It is mostly a tank and spank, but there are a couple of key mechanics to watch for. To, uh, At four corners of the room will be bright, glowing bulbs. These are poisonous spores that the tank can use in order to debuff the boss, and therefore increasing the damage it receives. The debuff lasts approximately 40 seconds, and in the meantime, the tank should be kiting the boss over to the next bulb in preparation for when it runs out. These spores do respawn, so if you accidentally pop a second one early, don't worry, it will not mess up the fight. The boss does have a tendency to jump around a lot, occasionally jumping to a random member in order to do damage, using a group-wide stun, or just knocking the tank back. Nothing too difficult, just be aware of them. At approximately 80, 50, and 20% health, the boss will summon three Bogween adds. These are more of a nuisance than anything else, but if they attack the healer, they can be dangerous, so DPS should focus these down quickly. Other than these two mechanics, the boss is mostly a rinse and repeat tank and spank.
supposed to be an ant? For some reason I was like stuck. No the Vigilant is the last boss of the Zerka Core Meltdown Flashpoint and has several mechanics to watch for. Arguably, this fight is most difficult on the healer. Spread throughout the room are seven data integration points, which kind of look like power cores. These cores must be destroyed before the boss can be damaged. Four cores are located at ground level, and three are on the ledge above. DPS must first deal with the cores on the ground before moving to the other three. After each core is destroyed, two adds will spawn. The tank will have to pick these up immediately. If he can defeat them both himself, that's optimal, otherwise the DPS will have to burn them down. Throughout the fight, a blue circle will be placed underneath a random member of the party. The member of the party should run to the outside of the room, and then as soon as the circle turns orange, run away from it. An ion electrical field will follow shortly after, which does a fairly substantial amount of damage if you remain standing in it. Also throughout the first phase of the fight, the Vigilant will randomly target a member of the party to do 10,000 damage with his eye laser attack. Healers should make sure that all party members are relatively topped off to avoid unnecessary deaths. Let's just kill the corp. Where is it? Warning. Vigilant energy levels at 94%. Time to reach minimum safe distance has expired. Okay. Three cores. As soon as the four cores on the ground are dealt with, the TPS should immediately start looking for the teleportation pads at the side of the room. These pads have a distinguishing beacon of light above them. By standing on these pads, party members will be teleported a few feet ahead of them to the data cores. At this point, DPS should focus them down just as before. There are three pads in all. Sometimes these pads are not as responsive as they should be. If you stand on it and it doesn't seem to do anything, run off and stand back on it again for a couple of seconds. Eventually it will figure out who you are and do its job. Probably. Vigilant energy levels at 72%. Zerka Corporation is now absolved of any culpability in your death. No, I'm not going up with that. I just had to give it off. Great dark comes for you! Put your hand in the 
last core. Just keep jumping on this. As soon as all seven data cores have been destroyed, the Vigilant will jump down and can now be damaged. In many ways, he is similar to the final boss of the Black Talon Flashpoint. The Vigilant has only two mechanics in this phase. Emergency Protocols is a pull that will pull all ranged members close to the boss. Immediately afterwards, he will charge up a Spin Attack, which is a large AoE that will do a substantial amount of damage. All party members should immediately run away from the boss once he starts charging his spin attack. One downside of being a ranged DPS or healer in this fight is that the emergency protocols will reduce how much time you have to get away from the spin attack. I find, as a ranged DPS, that a good strategy is to stand only a few meters away from the boss so that you will not be targeted by emergency protocols, thereby buying yourself a precious second or two to run away from the AoE. Aside from those two mechanics, this fight is largely a tank and spank. Well done! Thank you for watching my video guide for the Core Meltdown Flashpoint. If you liked the video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for future content. If you have any questions, be sure to leave a comment below and I'll do my best to help you. This has been Provis Gaming, and thank you again.